Hello guys, uh, welcome to my channel Rank Tech Solutions and if it's your first time you are visiting my channel, please do subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon so you will not miss any updates from my channel. And in this video, I'm gonna explain you about the complete Citrix logon process for Zenapp or Zen Desktop 7.x. The main reason for me to create this video is, you know, for end users, it's just, they just access the uh, Citrix uh, storefront URL, they submit the credentials, they get the icon, they click on it, they launch the application they want, boom. That's all. That's all they have to know. But when it comes to a Citrix administrator, they should be aware of how the login process works behind the scene. So only then, whenever there is any issues comes uh, for the users, you know, they're not able to launch applications or they get some error message, only if you know the login process, you can figure out where the issue supposed to be if you don't know you might not be aware where to check so the issue will be on some other side but you will be checking on some other side so it's always better to have a deep learning of citrix logon process works and it's going to be a deep dive so enjoy learning so Citrix logon or resource launch process can be broken into four levels authentication, enumeration, resource launch and finally session initialization. So all these four process I'm going to explain you for both internal as well as external users. So the first one authentication process and let's begin with the external users. So receiver on user's machine contacts in a scalar gateway using the remote access URL. So you know that's when uh, users enter the URL and uh, users gets the authentication page and user submits the credentials. And next scalar gateway sends the credential to Active Directory Domain Controller for authentication using LDAC protocol. And post authentication, AD submits the credentials back to NetScaler. A NetScaler gateway sends the credentials to a storefront and user gets logged into the store. So the external users authentication process over here and let's start with the internal users. So users uh, as usual uh, enter the URL uh, and then they submit their credentials and storefront contacts the Active Directory to authenticate the user through Kerberos. And there is one more level of authentication. I mean, it's, it's a type of authentication uh, only for internal users. And that is called Delegated User Authentication. So in this authentication, uh, as usual, uh, receiver on user's mission contacts the storefront directly through HTTP or HTTPS. And user gets the authentication page. They submit the credentials. But this time, Storefront passes the credentials to Delivery Controller and Delivery Controller authenticates the user with the Domain Controller using Kerberos. So after authentication, Delivery Controller sends the success response to Storefront and user is logged into the store. And authentication process is over here. Let's move to the enumeration process. So this is where user uh, get to see their uh, all the applications, desktops that they have access to. So let's start with the external users. Uh, so storefront passes the user credentials to a delivery controller. So I mean it's not only for external users, it's for both. So storefront passes the user credentials to delivery controller. And delivery controller performs a LDAP query to domain controller to determine user's SID and the ID group membership. So after getting the user's account information, delivery controller contacts the site database. There's a typo there. It's not site database. It's a site database on SQL server to determine what delivery group resources are available for the user. And after identifying the same, information about the name uh, and the icons are gathered and delivery controller returns those information to storefront. And uh, if the next internal user, storefront relays the apps and desktop information directly to a uh, Citrix receiver on end user's machine. But if it's an external user, then storefront relays apps and desktop information to an scalar gateway. 
and Netscaler Gateway proxies the stored from web page and delivers it to the end user. And users now should be able to see uh, all their apps and desktops that they have access to. And enumeration process uh, ends here. Let's jump to the research launch process with Netscaler Gateway and this is for external users. So right now uh, users got their icons and they decide which one they wanted to access. So user clicks on that icon in storefront page which is proxied by the Netscaler Gateway. And Netscaler Gateway transmit this launch request to storefront and storefront forwards the request to delivery controller. And delivery controller contacts the site database on the SQL server and identifies the appropriate app using load balancing rules. So once it's identified, delivery controller contacts the VDA running that running on that member server or the desktop. So one point to be noted here is by default, all the servers will be in listening state. But when it comes to desktop, they will not be in listening state. So delivery controller contacts them and get them ready for the upcoming new request or new session. So once the VDA is ready for the new request or the new session, it sends a session key to delivery controller. And delivery controller passes the session information to storefront and storefront contacts the secure ticket authority on delivery controller to get the secure ticket. The reason behind that is since it's going to be for external users the sessions without a secure ticket it's like we should be able to see all the you know identifiable server names the session information in that information so uh storefront contacts the sta on uh, delivery controller and it gets the secure ticket and after uh, obtaining the secure ticket storefront creates a launch file which has the session information replacing the identifiable session info and passes the launch file to Netscaler Gateway. And Netscaler Gateway sends the launch file to a Citrix receiver on the endpoint device. And that's when the resource launch process gets over for external users and now it's time for internal users. So as usual user clicks on an icon that they want to access and storefront forwards the request to a delivery controller and delivery controller contacts the site database on the SQL server through port 1433 and identifies the appropriate application using load balancing rules. And once that's identified, delivery controller contacts the VDA running on the app member server or the desktop. And once delivery controller got the VDAs ready for the new request or the new session, it sends a session key to a delivery controller and delivery controller passes that session information directly to storefront and storefront creates a launch file which has the session information and sends it to Citrix receiver on the endpoint device. So since it's internal users, so the contacting the security ticket authority and uh, getting the security ticket, this is not needed for the internal users. And now move to the session initialization process with Netscaler Gateway and this is for external users. So uh, now receiver got the launch file and by using the information provided in that launch file, receiver provides the security key to Netscaler Gateway and Netscaler Gateway contacts the security key authority on delivery controller to validate the ticket. So post validation, SDA provides the session information to Netscaler Gateway and using that session info, Netscaler Gateway establishes a session with the VDA hosting the requested resource. So at this point, VDA contacts the delivery controller for two main reasons and one to let delivery controller check out a license on behalf of them, second one to register that session info with the site database. So once that's done, Netscaler Gateway forwards all the session traffic between the receiver and the VDA and user should be able to use their session. And this is over for external users. Let's jump to session installation process for the internal users. So as usual, a receiver on the endpoint device establishes a session with the VDA hosting the requested resource using the session information 
provided in the launch file. So VDA contacts the delivery controller for two main reasons, just like the external users. So to let the delivery controller check off the license for them, behalf of them, and to register the session information with the site database. Once completed, users start interact with their application and desktop. And that's all guys. Thank you so much for watching and please stay tuned because I'm going to release a series of videos of how you can set up your own Citrix lab on your home. That's all guys. Have a great day.